Hey, what is going on Guardians? Evade here and welcome back to the channel. So today Bungie released a new Vidoc which of course had a bunch of information on the Black Armory but also discussed how content in Destiny 2 is going to be released over the next months and years. Now I can honestly say at this point, I don't know if it's just the hype from this trailer or not, but this is the most excited I've been for Destiny. You know, we've had those droughts in the past like with Rise of Iron, but this is not going to be the case this time around, and that is super exciting. So today we're going to round up all the information released within this Vidoc, talk about some of the secrets you may have missed, and uncover the future of Destiny 2 together. Have this annual pass, explore some of these areas that we haven't done before. We think that started with Forsaken, and we liked what we did, and we want more of it. Alright Guardians, welcome back to the channel, hope you are doing well, and let's jump right into today's video. So I'm going to begin by talking about the annual pass and how content is going to release, and then we'll get into the specifics of Black Armory which is going to release next week. So the point of this annual pass is to have three full seasons of content that last the entire year, with endgame, you know, power increases, and new activities for us to take part in. Now alongside this, if you enjoyed secret quests like the Whisper of the Worm, those are coming back as well. Of course, they're not going to tell us what they are, but those types of secrets and exotic quests will be hidden in the game moving forward, and that's pretty cool to hear because, you know, the whole situation with the Whisper where we were hunting for clues and trying to figure it out together was a really great experience. With each of these three seasons, if you own Forsaken, the power cap will be raised by 50 light, or 50 power, I guess. So it's not a ton, but the emphasis here is, you know, get more powerful so you can play in these activities like the raids, and it's all about the journey, right? Becoming legend, becoming more powerful, and that's what we as Guardians like to do in Destiny. Now speaking of that power cap there, the annual pass is also meant to give you new ways to pursue this endgame like the raids. In the Black Armory, this will be different forges with the Horde Mode experiences. In Season of the Drifter, this will be new Pinnacle Gambit activities, and then a bunch of secrets in Penumbra that they haven't shared yet. So that is a brief summary of this annual pass. There's these great images on Bungie.net, you can see everything for yourself. But let's next move on and talk about the Black Armory. So this mysterious exo right here named Ada represents this Black Armory foundry. This is a mysterious faction that has tried to keep these weapons hidden away from the Vanguard and ultimately the Guardians since the Golden Age. Now Ada has kept these forges and these areas closely guarded, but she needs our help now hunting down some of these forges. The reason for this is she wants us to help her, you know, build the Black Armory's arsenal up, and since we kind of just stumbled upon this, maybe she's like, hey, maybe the Guardians can help me now since they already know about this, and we can work together. Now within the Black Armory, there's going to be three different forges where you push back waves of enemies so you can get your components into the forge and manufacture your weapon on your own. So this is pretty cool because we essentially are the blacksmiths. We're creating our own weapons, forging them, and it even seems there's a new title surrounding this experience as well. Now something that I'm sure most of us will enjoy is that each of these forge will have matchmaking. So you can see this guardian goes up, it starts the mission, and you can search for a fire team to jump into the activity with. This sort of stemmed from the ideals of Blindwell and Escalation Protocol. You know, we sit there for minutes, maybe sometimes even hours, waiting for guardians to join us. But now this is the first step in making this process easier. Adding in some easy matchmaking to find some other people to play with. Very nice. Now as for some more backstory, the Black Armory are these lost craftsmen that stemmed from three different families to create this foundry. The three different backgrounds are Norse, Japanese, and French family lines that all banded together to create this armory and foundry itself. Now we do have the three names here, probably going to mispronounce these, but it's Volunder, Gofanon, and Izanami, which will have their own respective forges over the next month of content release. So here's a couple of examples of some of the weapons from these different families. Izanagi's Burden is the crazy sniper rifle where you have a magazine of four rounds and if you do the special reload it actually crams all four bullets into a single round that does damage that is brutal and will like totally compete with Whisper and Sleeper. It's a sniper rifle that can body shot an enemy. That's all I need to say. 
The bow is from the fringe family. It's beautiful. It feels a little thorny in it's the way it thorny, plays. Yeah. If you like thorn from Destiny 1, you're gonna love this bow. Yotun is the fusion rifle. It goes on your hand. It goes on your hand. It's the arm blaster, as it was affectionately referred to, and it fires a giant fireball slug that will set the ground on fire. And it follows you. And it will, yeah, it will track you down and murder you. It knows where you live. So within the Black Armory, there's going to be five new exotics, four new awesome weapons, and one fan favorite, which of course is going to be the last word. Alongside those weapons, there's going to be tons of new perks and weapon mods for us to adjust and customize our own arsenals the way we want. In a summary, Black Armory is about competing in all these new activities, becoming more powerful so you can enter the new raid, which takes place in the last safe city. I remember I used to do, you know, series back in Destiny 1 where we said, hey, what would you want in the future? And we talked about it and it was called Legendary Comments. I don't know how many times people suggested a raid in the last safe city and that's going to happen here. So this section of the city has been abandoned and sort of locked away from the rest of humanity. This raid is going to be a little bit different, which is sort of a fresh take on raids in Destiny, and it will feature things like vehicles, and it was also compared to Wrath of the Machine when it comes to the intense action and combat. So that was all the stuff crammed into the Black Armory, but when can you expect this stuff to release? With this great image here from Bungie, we basically get a calendar for the next month. Next week we're going to get the Volunder Forge, December 7th is going to be the Gofanon Forge and the new raid, December 11th is the Dawning, December 18th is the Izanami Forge, the Niobe Labs January 8th, Exotic Quest which is the last word January 29th, and lastly Crimson Days is going to return on February 5th. So Guardians, hope that was a nice summary for you with the Annual Pass and uh, the Black Armory expansion. But let's talk about some minor details you may have missed and speculate on some of the things to come in these future releases. Over the last couple of weeks, a new lore book became available from Eva Levante, which kind of details where she's been and what she's been up to. Now I'm going to be honest, I have got some of those cards, but I haven't really read up on it. But we can see from this trailer that she's going to return in The Dawning. Next within Season of the Drifter, if you pause and look at this image, you may have recognized some of this, but we get Gambit private matches, a new Gambit experience, so they're kind of changing the mode around a bit, and finally Zer Bounty, so hopefully this makes him useful because I don't remember the last time I purchased something from Zer, and he's been kind of useless since D2 came out, so that's definitely nice to see. Lastly, for June and August, it says Season of the Blank and all the stuff is redacted, but we do know that Battle.net did kind of leak this and it was Season of the Shadows, so whether that changes or not, who knows, but that was the name they listed on their site. So it seems we will be getting a new raid within Season of the Forge and Season of the Shadow, but not one in Season of the Drifter. And also one of the biggest things to note for me is in Season of the uh, Shadows here, it says new 6 player match made activity. So we were getting many hints of like, hey, we might go back to the Leviathan, so is this maybe a six-man patrol? Is it something different? Who knows, but I'm definitely excited for that. Anyway, Guardians, that's all I got for this video. A bunch of information to dive through. I'm going to leave some images up of some of the new weapons and gear you can earn, and then the video is going to end. But if you did enjoy and this video did help you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for some more awesome Destiny 2 news and entertainment. My name's Evade, and I'll catch you, Guardians in the next one. We really don't want to be a box product that you think of as being on a disc. We want to be a world that evolves and changes over time. Anytime you try something new, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be scary, but we got to forge ahead. Like, the world's changing, games are changing. It's time to set a new course. Yeah.